Hello. Hey there. I know plenty of people are out this week, so uh, we'll see who who comes on in. Amy, I think you were speaking, but you were muted for a second. Oh, we'll give it a few more minutes. That's all. All right, I'm going to guess that's who we're going to get, at least on this uh, American Holiday Week. So, uh, welcome. This is our normal TOC meeting. You have made it here. There are a few TOC members on the call today, and kind of here's our agenda today. Kind of want to chat about, um, like, KubeCon, Cloud Native Review, just overall reactions, and uh, the floor is yours. I'd put up some comments in here about like overall reactions, just good things, challenging changes for next time. Happy to be able to hear from folks. Hey, Amy, are you calling out the TOC member to comment? Or I'm just doing general, like everybody here. Okay. Like the, it, is, it is an open floor. Go ahead. Okay, I guess I'll start. Uh, let me turn on my camera. <laughs> sure, come on in. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so I think overall reaction, I've heard uh, really good things about uh, the keynote, I think was running really well. I mean, uh, one interesting comment I heard about the AI, I, I think I heard people talking about the wish there may be a little bit more AI contents because it's just so hot. But uh, Priyanka did a very cool demo at the beginning of the keynote, kind of set the stage about AI. And I heard some sentiment around God, uh, we wish to see a little bit more content around the AI, you know, after the opening keynote, there may be not so much content around the AI on any of the keynotes. Um, I think Kim, uh, Tim Hawking did a fantastic job on future Kubernetes. I've heard so many people love his talk. Um, yeah, so a lot of good things I heard and obviously got to meet um, a lot of uh, cloud native uh, team members, you know, and the leaders. That's very exciting. Lovely. Katie, I'll pass to you. You just happen to be here. Okay, cool. <laughs> I joined a bit late as well. Um, I think, well, this, uh, well, KubeCons in the, in the past years has been a lot of uh, interaction with uh, leadership, especially considering that we have the strategy, uh, meeting with the GB, the meetings with the tag chairs and so on. Um, actually interacting with the tags that we have a reason with as well, so I did focus a lot on that. Um, in general, I, I do like the direction we're going in terms of how we manage our work between the TOC and the text. Um, I think we had a very productive discussion there and I'd like to definitely see some of the um, action items thereafter for us to have a further discussion to see how we can implement that. So to ensure that the TOCs and the tags are successful in their pursuits. So definitely did enjoy that. Um, as always, I think everyone is curious about what's the new thing in, in cloud native. There are always discussions about that. I think AI was definitely on the spot here, um, which is a bit interesting considering that Wasm was on the, you know, in the spotlight last year and we didn't hear as much perhaps in the keynotes or the general sessions about that. So I think there's always this in kind of um, run towards or spotlight towards the new, uh, new emerging technologies, which is great. Uh, I think it's just a matter of us following through some of that enthusiasm and actually delivering as well. Um, so I think that's kind of to come as well in the AI uh, part of things. Um, I didn't attend any sessions, but I'm planning to watch some of them. So that's pending. So I don't have anything uh, in terms of direct feedback towards the content or the quality of the content um, uh, for, for the sessions, but I'm pretty sure it's all as usual, uh, quite good to, to watch thereafter as well. Is there any particular feedback we're looking for? Is it just like general? It was an open floor. Um, I'm really, really glad that you brought up the uh, TOC and, and tag chairs meeting. Um, did that work for being able to have that kind of towards like the end of the conference? And I know there were plenty of people who were actually in that meeting here. Mm. Uh, I think definitely it was helpful not to have everything in the same day like all of the gb and tuc and, and tech chairs all in the same day so i think that was definitely for me personally i i've actually had something every single day and i could pursue that uh, quite nicely throughout every single day so i did enjoy that um i'm not sure one hour was enough though uh for all of the discussions that we had perhaps we can do again something not long like maybe or two hours is going to be the extent of it and we can actually follow up for some of our agenda and items maybe we can collect an agenda beforehand as well so we can definitely do some of the admin and perhaps allocate a bit more time because i definitely would find that uh, productive for us that's my overview i would like to hear everyone else's maybe i'm going to pile up on their feedback yeah, by the way, I, I, I also largely... really enjoyed uh, the meeting. Just tell me quickly, I, I also really enjoy the TOC and TAG meeting. It just gives us an amazing opportunity to meet with other people. And also, I think this is the first KubeCon. There's no meet, uh, there's no conference on Friday. So people actually are really happy to stay till Thursday. Okay, I'm down. Sorry. <laughs> No, hey, I just wanted to quickly you. and kind of very specifically respond to the to the the last day piece of what Amy said. I, I think I agree with what Katie said about having a bunch of the stuff together because I felt like for me the conference had like the day that I spent with my team, the day that I spent with the TOC, like each each day kind of had a, a thing I was focusing on, which was great. My 
one thing about this being the last day is I flew out. I don't remember when it was, like three or four or something, but I ended up walking from the tag TOC meeting basically straight to an Uber to the airport. And that meant that the couple of Slack messages I got during that meeting that were like, hey, Dave, let's talk about this thing afterwards, all turned into replies from me from the airport two hours later saying like, later is going to be a Zoom call next week. Sorry. And um, I guess things like the, I, I'm not even sure. I was going to say the TOC panel may be an easier thing to like walk straight out of, but that also ends with some questions. I don't, I don't know if there's like a way to restructure it so that things like the tag TOC conversation has like diff always has some kind of hallway time afterwards. Uh, but I think that would have been great. Or maybe I just need to not fly out as early. Hi, Katie, everyone. you have a hand. Passing to you. I think there are other people like Justin, I think you were trying to say something before. And if not, I can I can go. Oh, I have one quick comment. Um, so uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't join the, the tag TOC meeting because uh, and there's this meet the Kubernetes community event happening at the same time. Uh, so uh, it would be great if uh, we could uh, schedule that at a different time if we are going to do this again in the next KubeCon. Thank you. Rina, go ahead. Go next. Oh, Katie, you do have a hand. Perfect. Okay. I think <laughs> I wasn't um, sure if it was like a remaining hand. So go ahead. Yes, uh, I wanted to kind of uh, maybe follow up on Dave's feedback on the TOC panel. Um, I do find that we don't have as much attendance for the TOC panel. I think, uh, and it's a very rare opportunities on when all of the TOCs are in the same room, and perhaps we can actually have an open floor agenda as well. Um, I'm not sure if we can do anything about that proactively, but I would love to have more and more people uh, interested in attending. Uh, Maybe we can, we can do some advertisement around that. I don't know, uh, some marketing, but I, I would definitely like for more people to turn up. Um, and again, maybe half an hour is not sufficient, but uh, that, that's kind of the slot we have uh, during the sessions at KubeCon. And then the other thing that I really, really like is celebration. We actually had new awards and I'm loving the fact that we only come up with these awards in September and they actually were given in November. So I'm absolutely loving that. And I think we need to do more of that. Rina, you have a hand. Come on, video. Um, so I was going to echo what others have already kind of said. Um, a lot of the overlap um, between the TOC, the SIG meet and greet, uh, the Kubernetes community, and then the there was an overlap with the, the tag meet and greet. I forget what it's called. Um, so trying to run between everything um and go up and down and across the halls and um it'd be can those be scheduled where yeah just not overlap those um i do like the idea of so pre-submitting questions i thought that was great justin and then also um oh i had another thought but i'll come back to it since i can't remember right now thank you Lynn and then Duffy. All right, I'll go next. Uh, just to answer Katie's question. Um, so I think for many of the attendees, they don't know about the TOC panel. And I happened to find out accidentally where I was browsing the agenda. I think it would be really helpful if we have a more descriptive uh, in the in the TOC panel to discuss, you know, maybe a particular topic focus like the, the TOC's guidance on where the AI is going in the cloud native ecosystem, you know, have a hot topic attached to it. So people knows what uh, the topic we're discussing was like open floor kind of Q and A. So that might be helpful, uh, but I do agree with you. It's like so rare to see all the TOC member on the panel no, except the one, I think, but the attendance wasn't great. Yeah. Over to you, Duffy. Yeah, I think we could also probably do a better job of like advertising it ourselves and also as part of the CNCF, like we could actually use the CNCF Twitter handle to push that, to push more interest in that than we are. Um, that's another area. Another thing from this KubeCon, obviously, uh, it was it was interesting. I felt like the energy of KubeCon had like shifted from here's what we're about to do, here's what's coming to like here's what we have done, and here's what 
Um, so it was like a point of maturity, which was interesting. Like, it was a definitely a, a different energy than, than I've experienced at other KubeCons. Um, I enjoyed doing the panel on the big stage. That was the first time there. Everybody, I mean, despite the hiccups, we were able to get that done, and I felt like it came out pretty well. Although, in retrospect, I probably would have stolen Chris's slides for that, because I think he did a better job on his slides than I did. Now that I think about it, he's probably much better uh, situated to have a to do a report on what we've been working on and stuff. So a combination of those two would have been good. If somebody's doing this in the future, I do recommend that they do that. Um, uh, the running around was, you know, I mean, the challenges with, with things back to back, I made, I made some of them and I made some time in some of them, but I wasn't able to make all of them, but that's a limitation of the world. Um, but yeah. Ricardo, you had a comment in chat as well. Uh, regarding the TOC panel? Yeah, uh, come on in. Yeah, I, I mean, the, yeah, I had, some, we had some issues with uh, tag runtime uh, attendance too. So, uh, so maybe helping uh, with uh, reaching out with some more, to more folks uh, for these uh, maintainer sessions or TOC panel sessions that will be helpful next time. Uh, maybe advertising a little bit more. Uh, uh, so yeah, I do have another comment about the tag uh, in TOC meeting or tag chairs uh, and tag leads. Uh, I think uh, the common uh, consensus that I've been hearing is that maybe we need a little bit more structure in the in the meeting. So uh, I think uh, it was great to meet everyone, but it, I think uh, the meeting was bouncing around with different questions and different comments. So. So, uh, I think uh, having a little more structure around that might help next time. Uh, you don't want to put a lot of a structure too, because that makes it too rigid. Uh, but but having some sense of like these are the topics we're going to discuss, and these are the action items that came out of this discussion, and that's what we need to do going forward. Over to somebody Katie, else. who had a great question. Oh, actually, Alex, you have a hand. So then, and then Katie's question. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I thought KubeCon was great. I thought um, the interaction and the community were actually particularly good this year. The the TOC tag meeting <clears throat> I thought was good in the sense that we did have a wide variety of discussions, and I completely agree with what Ricardo said around the structure. But I think it was unstructured because we don't have enough of those conversations. Um, and in fact, one of the things we discussed in that TOC tag call was, you know, have one of these TOC sessions every month to actually discuss these sort of strategy items and and work on them because we shouldn't be just waiting for KubeCon to do that. So so I'd, I'd love that if if that became if that became an action item. Um, one thing I would say about the keynotes was I, I kind of got mixed feedback talking to different people. Some people love them, some people not so much. And I think um, we may want to balance out or, or, or maybe apply themes to the different days to, to kind of um, um, to kind of make them more interesting. Because this year, for example, we had a really intensive focus on the community and that's great like you know coupon is about the community but it was very much about the community and there was less about real life use cases and stories from end users and things like that and 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 the reason why the, the reason why I, I i i mentioned this is because um i have sort of uh colleagues in different companies and they specifically bring their managers and their CIOs and their CTOs to KubeCon to learn and to get the vibe of that keynote. And for example, last year in Detroit, that was really successful. And I know of companies that adopted a whole new cloud native strategy because of those keynotes. This year, it was almost all about diversity and community, which is also great, but they didn't come away with that. Oh, we need to do this. This is a thing. They, they didn't. And and maybe we need to kind of consider that for next year's agenda. 
Katie, passing to you, you had a hand first, then Matt. Yes, um, I have actually two two points I would like to, or two questions actually. Um, so back on Ricardo's point that uh, the tags didn't have a good attendance during their community meeting as well. Um, I was wondering uh, what is the interest at the booths as well, because tags had booths. So perhaps people just walking around and randomly seeing the booth, maybe that's how they engage better rather than having something on the schedule with 10 to 12 other sessions at the same time. So I was wondering what is the feedback there, even if you have a preference for the community meetings versus having a booth. That's the first question. And then um, the second point I would like to, to make, uh, and this is perhaps um, uh, following Alex's comment uh, on the keynotes. I think, um, I know we had a end user panel, but I definitely think there was uh, missing the end user keynote um, because the end user panel is a discussion, which is great. But I think it's that kind of impact of like these users, which is an end user, uses like all of these cloud technologies in this way, and this is the impact and so on, which is like very, very focused case study. Like that kind of case study uh, material was kind of missing from, from the keynotes this time around, I find. So perhaps we can do something about that. So, you know, when I, when one of the themes that I noticed was I talked to more people than ever who want to get practical things done. And this, this speaks a little bit to, to Alex who, who, you know, was saying that stuff that teaches, you know, I was looking at the stack overflow developer survey and it's something like 20% of people are using Kubernetes. And when you look at it and the more I talk to people, I mean, look at Kubernetes, look at our ecosystem, look at all the vendors. It's confusing. It's hard to navigate. We laugh about the landscape. And there's a lot of people who need to have the dots connected to figure out how they can do useful things with technology, right? And so just talking about the new technology is, is great, but for them, it's like, what do I do with this? How do I make it useful? How does it practically solve my problems? And for a lot of them, there's now just so much, right? I've been in this for so long. I'm, I'm deep inside the tribe, but somebody who's coming in from the outside looks at this and goes, I don't understand a lot of these base concepts. And I know when I was at the Helm booth, uh, talking to people, you know, the maintainer talking to people, I had to break things down to really simple ideas a number of times just to get them to understand the building block concepts. And then I could talk about how they could use a feature to do something useful. And I can't assume that a lot of these people know a lot of this stuff. You bring your boss, you bring these people, a lot of them don't know it. So how can we convey a certain amount of that to the new folks and help them figure out how to do useful things with it and not just get down into our silo of here's the community built on all these years and all these to, to bring them in and help them find the place and, and how it connects to their business, which will fuel more of this into the future. Ricardo, come on in. Okay, I'll add something because I think one of the things that came out of the talk tag meeting discussion was that we have uh, little engagement from projects in the tag meetings. Uh, they come when they have something to present or when they need to move to <clears throat> between maturity levels. Um, maybe KubeCon is also a nice place to set up some sort of gathering with projects and get feedback on what they expect from the TOC, uh, what went well in their incubation process, what things were missing, um, what can we do to, to have them showing up more often at the tech meetings? Uh, because we have so many of them, maybe we can get some momentum and do a similar talk tag meeting, but with the project as well. Other thoughts? Katie, I know you've got like a lot around like the tab, uh, the end user feedback as well. Oh, okay. Um, I will can come back to the uh, the folks talking about the tag booths as well. Karina, you had some comments. Oh, uh, the tag app delivery booth was popular when presentations were being given. So it was great, lots of people um, engaged, um, asking questions. So that landed really well. It is also 
Um, so how'd the runtime booth do though? I guess you may have missed that one. Ricardo, were you there? Yeah, I, I was there. The, the, there were some people who stopped by, but uh, it wasn't, you know, a lot of activity like, or tons of activity, right? But we got some good conversations interested in what the tag was doing, uh, what the scope was. Um, there was a lot of conversation around AI, of course. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of stuff had just kind of shifted around that, especially with the new working group, the artificial intelligence working group. So I think uh, maybe some more engagement will come out of that in the future. We had a lot of engagement with the platforms uh, white paper and the the maturity model that came out. Um, so yeah, I think if more of these papers or more comes out right before KubeCon generate more interest. But I will say that Josh Gavant put a lot of effort as well as Abby Bangser into making sure there are lots of talks and um, at the booth and they promoted it heavily. So it was a lot of work on their part. Um, we had some comments over in chat as well. Come on in. Unless you're stuck on mute and that happens too. Actually, I'll pass to anyone um, from Tech Contributor Strategy. I think Dawn's on the call as well. I, I am on the call, but I think Ali <laughs> should maybe answer that because I was unfortunately down with COVID for most of KubeCon, so I was less productive than I would have liked. Oh, sorry. I was distracted. So now I hear my name. What's... Yeah. So, yeah. Um, tag contribute strategy. So as I read in the chat, so we didn't ask for a, for a, a kiosk this time, but we instead visited other projects project boots and it was pretty good to talk to them about what we provide as a tag and also uh what is interesting about the these projects that we visited so this could be also um this could be another approach for tags if they don't want to staff the kiosks if there are less people um yeah this is another approach yeah, and one of the things that that we found was that when we when we had a booth, um, people just didn't know to come to talk to us. So we didn't get a lot of traffic in the booth because people didn't people didn't know what we were to know that they should come talk to us. Um, we got a couple of projects who specifically needed our help, where someone on the TOC had said, "Hey, you know, you should talk to Tag Contributor Strategy about this." And those people came came to our kiosk, uh, you know, in years past when we had one, but. Um, yeah, like Ali said, I, I think I think it was better for us um, as a tag to go around and talk to the projects. Karina, back to you. So following up on that, uh, during the tag meet and greet, what could have been helpful or would be helpful is if there were placards or something at each table saying, here's tag runtime, here's etc um kind of like at the sig meet and greet but even just a card for each tag or a postcard saying this is what the tag is this is what it could do for you these are you know common things you can find you know how do you find us just something informational just during that one hour um because i i talked to you know several end users during that time and it would have been helpful if i came prepared and you know with something here this is how you can really join us so um yeah tag meet and greet was kind of like a, a an experiment that we did for this time and it sounds like it kind of worked and we kind of need a little bit more structure around it is that fair okay ricardo you've got a lot in chat so i'm going to pass back to you because you've got a lot in here yeah uh so plus one to the ricardo's comment about maybe having some of the projects present in the tag booth or or have a space in the conference to uh, 
engage with the projects and they can come and actually talk about what they're doing and how they're growing and what kind of help they need. So that's really good, I think. And regarding Matt's comment, uh, yeah, I think uh, over the years, people have mentioned this a lot about the landscape and about being confused, uh, all the different projects and everything keeps growing with new projects every time. So uh, you end users and you know, are confused about where to start or where which project to use so, uh, because there's so many, obviously they start with Kubernetes in the beginning, but uh, there are so many other options so that they don't know, they don't know where, where to go. So they look at the landscape and then <laughs> they see so many things and so they don't know what to do either. So I thought they, we had a, a beginner session or beginner track at KubeCon. I don't know, I don't know if we have that anymore, but maybe yeah, in the future we can con continue to consider that, consider beginner type of uh, engagements. And um, yeah, and then also Leo's uh, suggestion about using the, not using, but engaging the ambassadors to help uh, with uh, the tag activities or reaching out to groups around the world where they're actually based off. So I think that might be helpful too. Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, Duffy, passing to you. Yeah, it was occurring to me that I think we in the past have like done something with the TOC during the contributor summit. And I wonder if we should do something like with the tags in the contributor summit, just to make them aware of more of that opportunity. Like people who are like uh, contributors available to the idea that there's something to, to be done in the tag side. remember anything around TOC directly around Contributor Summit, but I will take that, like, I, I, I will think about this one. Alex, coming back to you. Um, <clears throat> just an idea. We we talk about the landscape in almost every meeting and every discussion, mostly ironically, but what if we had a demystifying the CNCF landscape session with TOC members <clears throat> and the tag members, uh, tag chairs there, and kind of just did a quick five minutes per tag to say these are the storage projects these are the runtime projects these are the app delivery projects these are the security projects and just have like kind of like an office hour q a type session for an hour and invite people and mention it in the keynote so that people actually come because that's the other thing if we if we're having a toc meeting and we're worried about attendance mention it in the keynote Uh, Chris has actually a great comment over in, in um, chat about Catherine Paganini has done a great job of the demystifying presentation and uh, Landscape 2.0 is linked here as well. I'm not sure if he can drop on in, but maybe I've just said everything for him. Hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, neat stuff. Yeah, I think that might help as far as like the uh, getting people into a place where it actually makes more sense for them. Yeah, lots of good comments back in here. Um, other thoughts? Ricardo, come on back in. Yeah, sorry. I, I have, it's not so much as a thought, but we, we had some round internally also feedback from Kutcon. <clears throat> One item that I think was also brought up in the keynote on purpose, which was the kind of issues with the... Uh, a specific feature in this case, the dynamic resource allocation for GPUs, where a lot of work has going been going on Kubernetes with some issues that need to be tackled at a technical level. But this means this has implications to a lot of projects that are in the batch HPC AI space. Um, once these things are sorted out, and basically the DRA people were asking for help from end users asking for help from anyone. So I think there's a need to sort of somehow coordinate that. I think there is this working group batch uh, in Kubernetes, inside Kubernetes that is handling the Kubernetes side, but the implications for the remaining projects in the CNCF, not sure if we have, uh, there's the batch C++ 
systems initiative and what you um I, I was just thinking how the TLC could help with this. It's a very specific thing. It's kind of a key feature to enable AI workloads in the future for cloud native deployments. Um, I don't know if others have thoughts on how we can try to help them, uh, guide them, put everyone in contact. Justin Cormack, this seems exactly like some of the areas for your expertise. I, I mean, can I, Ricardo, can I, can I learn more about this? Because I, I was kind of, I totally missed this, and I'm interested. Okay, so there, there, are, there were a few talks. So there was a keynote uh, where Kevin, uh, Tim, and Marlo, I think, was there, and some other people basically explained uh, what the, this is about and why this is required. And I think this was a request from Kevin and others to kind of make the problem, uh, make everyone aware of it. There's a couple of talks, I can put the links uh, in the TLC channel uh, from Kevin and uh, Evan and someone else from Google that I forgot now the name, uh, explaining what the issue is. Uh, we need to enable uh, dynamic resource allocation to have more flexible allocation of GPUs and GPU slices in Kubernetes, but the solution is quite generic for any kind of resource, and there are issues for it to be accepted by a SIG scheduling and SIG uh, uh, node uh, right now because of the implications on scheduling and the autoscaler. Uh, in Amsterdam, this th this was presented, and it sounded like it's alpha now, it will be better soon, and it's done. What came out of the last cookcon is there's some sort of blocker that needs to be figured out. And I don't know, we, ne we need to... I was just thinking of how we can engage with them and put everyone together because getting this in Kubernetes will take some time. Getting the projects that rely on this feature to integrate it will take again some time. And in the meantime, everyone is trying to do AI and trying to make the most of GPUs that don't exist or they can't get hold on. So if we help, if we can help speed up, I think it's one one place where maybe the TLC can play a role as well. And uh, Dems has provided plenty in chat and would like to not be called on next. Um, and Ricardo, you have more comments as well. So it, just to complement, there, there, if you're following the Kubernetes working group batch, so basically they decided to take the technical parts there. Uh, but at the same time, they're asking for feedback from end users saying, is this too complicated? Can we simplify it? So there's a part there, but then there are all the other projects like Volcano, Armada, all these things that we'll probably want to integrate at some point. So I don't know, just making sure that everyone talks together. Rina, you have a hand, go ahead. Um. I think my comment was more about I you know, point to work group batch. That's awesome. I more at a looking at the overall issue that you're bringing up is there's a lot going on in Kubernetes that's enabling everything on top of Kubernetes, all the other cloud native projects. So as because you know we have some things that we're looking at right in Signode and others that. It's taking longer because kind of similar things. So should these discussions be pointed back to working groups in Kubernetes? Is this something that the tags can help drive? Is this a TOC thing when there's already a lot that the TOC is looking at? So I'm not making an, an exact, this is what we should do, but I think you're bringing up kind of a bigger macro issue that eventually should be talked about more. But I have been looking into work group batch and they do a great job. So anyway. Other comments? Oh yeah, Ricardo, you're finding all the good links today too. Folks that we haven't heard of that want to be able to come on in.
All right. Um, you know, we've kind of gotten good, like 40 minutes in here, which I think is pretty good for this group, just generally. Um, Jeefy did have one final thing in here um, as far as being able to help wrap us up, because we do actually have a place to be able to put feedback as well. Um, I know he put it in chat a little earlier, and we can kind of bring that back up again. Yeah, thank you much. I have relinked it. Thank you. Uh, since I've joined the CNCF, uh, I try to collect community feedback and I present it to the events team. Every single KubeCon I do this. Uh, I try to get different groups to put feedback in here just so I can get some more diverse perspectives. Um, so here you go. Feel free to put stuff in here, celebrate things, tell us what we need to improve on. You may feel free to put your names in there. When I give it to the events team, I do completely create a new document and scrub all the names when I copy paste it. So the end feedback to the events team uh, will be anonymous, but you know, if you wanna have your name next to it so other people see before then feel free. Otherwise don't put your name in there. Just, you know, be nice, be kind. We're all trying, that's it. All right. I think that pretty much wraps us up today. Any final thoughts? All right. Looking hearing none, I will send everybody back. Oh, Katie, come on in. Yeah, grab some. No, no, I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see everyone in Paris, which is going to be very close because December is just gone. February is not existent. So, yeah, it's going to become very quick. <laughs> nope, this is wonderful. Our next meeting is going to be, uh, let's see, let me bring up calendar here. We've got December 5th and we've got the uh, tag updates. So like, come by and tell us all of the cool things that you were doing, all of the cool things that you found out about KubeCon and where you want to go from here. So thank you all very, very much. We'll see you online. Bye-bye. Bye all. Thank Bye. you.